Hello everybody and welcome. In today's video, we're going to be talking about the XG stat and how it relates to Football Manager. And let's get started by talking about it. In Football Analytics and in Football Manager, you may have heard of a stat called XG. And XG stands for Expected Goals. It's a stat that calculates the chance that a shot will go in. The numeric range for XG is between 0 and 1. A shot that has an XG of 0.25 means that you could expect the shot to go in 25% of the time, or a 1 in 4 chance. A penalty shot has an XG of 0.79, a 79% chance that it results in a goal. There are multiple factors that Football Manager takes into account when calculating your XG. Things like the location of the shot, the angle of the shot, the type of shot, like if it's a header, free kick, or from open play, and even the positioning of the defense. In a match, the XG of each shot that is taken is added together to give you the total XG for a match. XG is a probability stat, and to talk more about probability, let's look at an example. This is a team attacking in the final third, and this player here is going to take a shot. I'll let it play out and then we'll rewind to when the shot is taken. The player takes a shot from outside the penalty box. For the sake of argument and this example, I'm going to give this shot an XG of 0.1. So we have a shot that has an XG of 0.1, meaning it has a 10% chance of going in. At this point, sadly, we have to do some math. To recap, we have a shot that has an XG of 0.1, which again means it has a 10% chance of going in. If we took this shot 10 times, our total XG for the match would be 1.0. This is the equation. 10 shots multiplied by our 0.1 XG from each of those 10 shots gives us a total XG of 1.0. In our theoretical match, we've taken 10 shots and have a total XG of 1.0. This does not mean we should have expected to score a goal. All it means is that we took a shot that has a 10% chance of going in 10 times. Each shot is considered on its own, not what you've done previously in the match. That last point is why you should keep probability in the back of your mind when looking at the XG stat. As an example, if you flipped a coin 9 times, and all 9 times it landed on heads, while unlikely, it still doesn't affect what would happen if you flipped it again. On the 10th time you flipped the coin, it would still have a 50-50 shot of landing on heads or tails regardless of what happened in the previous results. This is the same idea with XG and total XG. Just because you're adding shots to your total XG doesn't mean you're increasing the chances that each individual shot goes in. And if you're wondering what is considered a good number for XG, while not exact, I would consider a poor shot to be anything from 0.01 to 0.09. An average shot would be 0.10 to 0.19. A good one would be 0.2 to 0.3. And anything in the 0.4 range and above is going to be excellent. Now that we have an idea on how XG works, let's check out some match stats to dive deeper. This is a match I had with Monaco against Marseille in the Coup de France where we lost 2-0. If you just looked at the stats, the first reaction may be to say it's just our luck that their goalie put on a man of the match performance. Yes, their goalie had a lot of saves, but our XG was 1.9 on 19 shots. Which thankfully makes the math easy. On average, we had an XG of 0.1 per shot, so not great. They had 7 shots with an XG of 0.13 which gives them an XG per shot of 0.19. That's nearly double our XG per shot. So while they had fewer shots taken, each one they did take had nearly double the chance of going in when compared to ours. This is another example, one that's probably pretty common. My River Plate team had this match where we drew 1-1. At first glance, it looks like we got FM'd. Our XG was 2.6 and we only scored one goal. But this is where you need to examine the XG stat to figure out if you're actually creating chances. You can do this by looking at the shot map, which gives you an XG for each individual shot. Our goal had an XG of 0.47.
and if we look at the goal, we can see why it had such a high XG number. Our striker was right in front of the net and only had the goalie to beat. But if we look at the stats again, our total XG was 2.63, and we know that one of the shots had an XG of 0.47. What that means is that the other 20 had a low chance of going in. Just because we finished the match with a total XG of 2.6, that doesn't mean we should have expected to score more than two goals. It just means that we took a bunch of low quality shots that added to our total XG. This match on the other hand was much different. We only had three shots, but each one was extremely high quality. Nearly a 0.3 XG per shot. On the other hand, we defended very well. They had 12 shots, but each individual shot had an XG of about 0.07. So we were unlucky that they scored. But actually, we weren't unlucky that they scored, because you may know who the striker is that scored their goal. And that's what we're going to talk about in the last section, the often overlooked part of XG. The biggest thing about XG and why you need to think about it in the context of a match is that it doesn't take into account the player taking the shot. Our final example will be from a player you may have heard of. This is Messi. He's about to take a shot that has an XG of 0.15. If this was a semi-pro, non-league center back in this exact same situation, the shot would still have an XG of 0.15. But the player's attributes affect the shot just as much as anything else. And while the shot only has an XG of 0.15, I think we would all expect him to score this goal because of his superior attributes. If you're looking to improve your XG in a match, here are some things to keep in mind. First, in addition to your total XG, what is your XG created per shot? Sometimes it's better to have quality over quantity. Again, the equation is the number of shots divided by your total XG. Next, where is the location of your shots? The closer you are, the better chance you have of scoring. The team instruction, work the ball into the box, and the player instruction, shoot less, can both be effective at improving your shot location. Third, pay attention to your player roles. Roles like the inside forward, Metsala, and Segundo Volante love to take shots, especially from a distance. And finally, it's important to remember the ever-flowing thread through all of Football Manager. Sometimes, we just get unlucky. As we wrap up, a low XG shot is not inherently bad. After all, you can't win the lottery unless you buy a ticket. But hopefully this video sheds some light on the XG stat and how it relates to Football Manager. If you'd like some more information on player roles and tactical ideas, I've got some different playlists here on the channel. I also have a Patreon account if you'd like to support the channel. Anyway, that's all for today's video. I hope you enjoyed. Thank you for watching.